Let's look at plate or tray absorption column in more detail. You want to increase the absorption rate in an absorption column and one way to do that is to increase the retention time in the column and to increase the retention time we can utilize a few types of designs and one of them is the plate design or tray design while the other is the packed column design. There are mainly two types of flow in a tray column design. There's a cross flow and the counter flow where the cross flow is more common compared to the counter flow. So imagine that this is a tray and uh, there are holes in the tray and we have gas moving through the holes of the tray and at the same time liquid is flowing on the tray moving from left to right and the gas will bubble through the liquid and some of the gas will be absorbed by the liquid through mass transfer. Because of this cross direction, this type of flow is called the cross flow. For the counter flow, the same, gas would move in from below uh, through the tray, uh, through its holes, but at the same time liquid will flow down through the tray in the same hole and by going in this counter direction, there is contact between liquid and gas to facilitate the movement of gas into the liquid or to, or to facil facilitate the absorption of gas into the liquid. Let's look at the different types of plates that is uh, plate design or plate configuration that is available in an absorption tray column. So one common one is the cross flow where liquid will flow from the top and this liquid that drops down to this tray is called the downcomer. It drops into this, into this tray and it will move downwards uh, because the tray is inclined, would fall to the next level here. So from the side, we can imagine that the tray will look something like this with the liquid moving downwards and dropping to the next level below. For a reverse flow represented by this diagram, we see that the liquid would flow from this section, move its way around the baffle to move to this section which is at a lower height compared to this. Now this would increase the path length and if it's increased then you would have a longer time to transfer the gas into the liquid. The tray itself would have holes in them so that uh, gas would flow upward. Since there is a long path length due to this baffle, there will be increased mass transfer. That's what it means here where it says the downcomer liquid is reduced because there is less of the rapid movement of this liquid that, that goes down at this section to the next tray below. This configuration is good for low LOVG ratios. What about high LOVG ratios? And when I mean high, it means that there is a higher amount of solvent used compared to the gas. In contrast to low LOVG ratios where there is a lower amount of solvent compared to gas. Anyway, L stands for liquid, while G stands for gas, and these are, these are two flow rates. As a whole, they are dimensionless. For the double pass, we see that the liquid flows get split into two directions, just like above, except for the trays on the side, the tray will look something like this. The liquid coming down like so, meet at the middle, and come down as the downcomer. It gets split into two directions, and this kind of configuration is able to handle high liquid flow rates compared to lower gas flow rates. So if you are expecting high amounts of gas to process, then you would want to use this configuration. But if you are expecting a lower amount of gas, then you can use this configuration. There are three types of trays. The sieve or perforated trays, the valve trays, and the bubble cap trays. This is the diagram for the sieve trays. Vapor or gas bubbles into the liquid through the small holes of the trays. You can see the holes on the trays in this diagram of the top view of the tray. The hole sizes range from 3 to 12 millimeters, where 5 millimeters is common, and liquid is prevented from flowing down the holes by the gas that flows upwards through the same hole. The liquid comes in from the top, goes over the trays, and the gas bubbles through the liquid and comes down on the left. This is called the downcomer liquid and goes to the next tray and the same process occurs. This is the same type of perforated trays or sieve trays for a double pass absorption column. Quid flows in the middle of the column, moves to the left and right, and gets contacted by the gas flowing through the holes of the trays, and flows down as a down camera. This is a picture of a valve tray. The same holes or perforations are on the tray just like the previous types of trays, but they are covered by liftable caps. You can see the caps on top of the holes in this diagram when gas flows through from the bottom and it is of high enough 
flow rate, then the caps would lift that which allows the gas to seep through the valve and bubbles through the gas. The valve would prevent the liquid from flowing through the holes to the next level. This is a schematic of the bubble cap tray and a magnified version of the bubble caps. Bubble caps are designed to disperse gas flow as fine bubbles and when it's at a smaller size then the effective mass transfer area is enhanced and it also is to minimize it is also designed to minimize the leakage of liquid through the holes or gas channels. Now we can determine tray diameter or column size by the amount of gas that will be processed by the absorption column. But the liquid solvent that flows down the column must also be deep enough on each tray so that it will to totally cover the holes for any gas flow rates, even at low gas flow rates. The phenomenon entrainment is when liquid droplets get carried over to the plate above and if there is a high gas flow rate, this would cause high entrainment which would cause flooding in the absorption column. So to avoid flooding, column diameter, how big or how small the column should be, needs to be calculated and designed adequately. Now let's look at packed columns in contrast to plate columns. Pack towers are used for continuous counter current contacting of gas and liquid absorption and the column is a simple column with packings in it instead of trays. The packing's job is to distribute the liquid that flows from the top of the column. There are three types of packings and they are arranged randomly in the column. The first is broken solid, second shaped packing, and third grid. Packings are used to increase the contact surface area between gas and liquid per unit volume and at the same time to minimize pressure drop. The packing sizes range from diameters of 1.5 to 7.6 centimeters and the rule of thumb for the size of the column with respect to packing size follows this ratio of 10 to 12 which means the column diameter should be 10 to 12 times bigger than the individual sizes of the packings. This is a schematic of a typical packed absorber column and on the right common types of packings used. The one on top is the rashid rings, the one on the right is influx saddle, below that tall rings, burl saddle, cyclohelic spiral ring, lessing ring, and cross partition ring. Also at the top of the packed column there is a liquid distributor and it looks something like these schematics. A liquid distributor's job is to spray liquid down into the column so that it provides maximum amount of the contact surface of the liquid to the gas on each packing. This is the orifice type of liquid distributor or this is the notch chimney type. This one is a notch true while this one is the perforated ring type. 